A week ago, about someone asked how in the heck they can fix their sagging roof overhang. And this actually happens. It was happening there for a while when they were using 2x4 trusses. Uh, they used them for everything. 2x4 uh, rafter tails overhanged. Three feet, uh, four feet, they used two by fours. And then finally they switched to two by six if needed. But uh, if you have a house with a tile roof on it and a overhang larger than 24 inches from the exterior wall to the face of the um, fascia board, let's say, then uh, you could actually have a problem with uh, the sagging, sagging roof overhang. So... Uh, anyway, the concept is relatively simple. The work, however, is going to be a little harder in some cases uh, than uh, expected. I went ahead and drew a simple building with uh, roof truss framing and no plywood, no roofing um, to give you a better idea what you're going to be dealing with. Here's another picture. We're going to pretend like the sag of the overhang sagging is in the middle. And the first thing you will need to do will be to remove uh, the blocks in between the rafters that are sagging. And then you will need to cut off the overhang. And again, this is all to make it look like it's uh, supposed to. You can actually leave the rafters if you wanted to. Um, but uh, it wouldn't look that good. After that, you will install new rafters. The rafters will nail right next to the roof trusses. And again, like I said, the concept is simple. I left the fascia board on there. But uh, in some cases, you're not going to be able to get the roof rafters in with uh, the fascia board there. And don't forget, you can always go through the attic. If you need to and you have the room, you can go through the attic or slide them through the areas where the blocks were and then stand them up. Now, some of the rafters will need to be notched to fit where they sit on top of the wall. Uh, sometimes the trusses, if it's a roof truss, most of the time the top roof cord on the truss or basically the rafter is a solid two by four it goes all the way down but every once in a while um, it might uh, they might be off a little bit and create a problem for you so you might need to actually notch those um, so getting them up into the attic this is going to be the tough part if you're in a garage yeah this will be great uh, if you have a certain house with a low pitch roof this could be a nightmare and uh, you might actually, in some cases, need to take the roofing off and the roof sheathing. Uh, again, like I said, the concept is simple. The work could be a little tedious. Now, when you get the rafters in and you're in a, uh, okay, well, how long should they be? Realistically, you could go with a regular cantilever overhang. If you have a two-foot rafter overhang, then you, you want to be at least six feet but you might need to go a little, little higher. You might need to use a little longer board, and here's the reason why. In the attic, you're not gonna be able to nail down at the bottom of the um, rafter, so most of the nailing will take place at the top. So in this case, you might actually need a 12-foot or 14-foot board if you don't have the room to stand up in the attic. Um, and then you will do all of your nailing at the top. You will nail, uh, I would nail at least uh, six nails. Um, and if you can, stagger your nailing uh, 16 inches on center, 24 inches on center, something like that. Uh, if you can nail along the entire truss, that would be great. If not, like I said, this is going to be something you're going to have to pre-plan, put a little thought into. After you install the rafters, you can recut new blocks. Now, the blocks will be different sizes since you are moving the rafters. So you're actually, in a case like this, you're actually going to have, uh, on 24-inch centers, normally you have a 22 and a half inch block. You're actually going to have a 21-inch block, a 22 and a half inch block, and then you're going to have a 24-inch block. So you actually will have one rafter that'll be a little overspanned. But this is all something that when it's said and done, you should be able to pull the 
sag out of the um, fascia board and the overhang. Now you might need to actually remove a section of the fascia board. A lot of times when this, uh, when this happens and the rafters are sagging and the fascia board is actually sagged, it's got a warp in it, you will need to remove a large section of the fascia board. Um, and again, how many roof trusses you repair, I'm gonna leave up to you. You could always, if you put two, two if you have, let's just say a sag in about a, let's just say a 12 foot span, for example, you can always use two rafters in the center to pull the sag out and then add furring on top of the other rafters um, where they are sagging, but then use those rafters to um, reattach the new fascia board to. So again, the fascia board on this, the length of it, that's gonna be up to you. If you are having problems sliding the rafters in, um, you can always remove the fascia board and most of the time it's gonna have to be removed anyway. So keep that in mind uh, while you're planning your project. So anyway, I hope this helps. If it does, hit the old thumbs up button. Your uh, comments, positive comments, are always greatly appreciated.